stay in chains We, we want change, we want change Welcome everyone to this moment. Uh, this is the audiovisual circle. Welcome. And uh, today Sierra, uh, Manchevani, and all of us, we are going to be sharing an audiovisual piece, as we are saying, uh, of our lives, and especially from Chevani's. Uh, but before start, starting that, we want to make a check-in and a quite also similar one, an audiovisual one. We would like to very quickly say hello to everyone and listen, uh, where, where are you from and uh, how are you arriving, your first feelings, a little, a very short introduction of each one. But what we really want, meanwhile, is uh, when you have your, your moment, uh, please to show us your windows. We want to see if, if it's day, no? If it's night, you can also show us a little a little image from whatever you want you are. Maybe also it could be a frame or of something, a piece of uh, furniture, wh whatever, but something that tells us about you, okay? So, uh, for example, me, I'm Camilo. I'm in Colombia, and um, I'm, part, I'm part of this Ecoverse since two years ago that I was in Mexico and met Sierra and Chevani and some of us that are here in this meeting. And I'm here in Pasto, in Colombia right now. And I'm showing outside, this is next to a volcano that is called the Galeras. And uh, I don't know if you got to see lots, but uh, I'm in, a, in, a, in the countryside, in the field. And there was like, a, this is like an ecoverse also, an ecoversity. It has uh, some domes and some spaces made with uh, permaculture techniques and where people meet and children meet from all this, all this part of the countryside. This is a huge volcano. It's called the Galeras. And yeah, that's, that's me. And uh, I'm going to uh, pass uh, the, the ball of the word of the presentation to Chevani directly. Because uh, Chevani, it's our, our audiovisual piece today. So where are you? Tell us. How are you? Greetings, greetings, Sanvanan, uh, Taweres, in our languages, or a few of our languages. Uh, I'm connecting from South Africa, Johannesburg. Right now, it's eight o'clock, five past eight, this side. So I'm, let me see if I can quickly show you guys out of my window or door. It's dark. And there you see a bit of the city behind. <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy to, to be here and I'm happy to share. Uh, let me pass, because we're going to talk more, let me pass along to Sierra. Hey, Giovanni. <laughs> uh, I'm so happy to see all of your faces. And um, Camila and I were doing these audiovisual circles monthly um, back at the beginning of the year. And we haven't done it in some months. And so to come back and like feel the space, there's a certain energy about it um, is lovely and I've missed it. So I'm happy to be here and thank you all for, for showing up. And I will show you, I am on the west coast of Turtle Island, also known as North America. And this is what it looks like outside of my window. I'm at my friend's house in like a pretty normal neighborhood, whatever that means. Um, that white van there is interesting because it is my van and it is my home. Um, that's where my bed is and where I live um, when I'm on the road, um, which I'm on the road a lot. So that's me and I'll pass it to Jordi. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Yeah, you said it right. Hi, I'm Jordi. I'm consider myself from Mexico, but right now I'm in New Mexico, USA. Um, I'll show you, I'm at a coffee shop because I was kicked out of my house this morning. Like as a fun way, not really. Uh, <laughs> it's very, I can't, okay. It's very yeah. sunny and uncloudy. So that's cute. Cool. Uh, I was introduced to the idea of ecoversities by Bruno. Uh, and so I'm here curious and hopefully we'll be a, a part of it soon. <laughs> Thank you. And I'll pass it on to Bruno. 
<laughs> Hello, Bruno. Thanks, Jordi. Hello, everyone. So happy to, to be here and see all of you. And yeah, so excited. And yeah, as always, as I happen to be near you guys. So thank you for that. I'm calling from Finland. I'm going to show you now from my window. It's already winter in here. Wait, I don't know if you can see, but all of that is snow. Okay. Wow. And, yeah. Oh. And I'm and I'm not ready for winter or cold or anything. So, <laughs> so I'm really jealous of all your blue skies and warm places. So embrace those and yeah. And yeah, really happy to be here and connecting with all of you and see what you are bringing today. And I'll pass it now to Poja, if I pronounce it right. Puja. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> hi, everyone. I am Puja Sati from India. Um, it's pretty late here. It's almost midnight. So I don't know how much you'll be able to see, though I can just try a bit. It's green. You have a lot of green in your. Yeah. So I met Sierra like for one of the um, summits. And after such a long time, I'm seeing her once again, and I'm so happy to be here. And really curious what's going to happen. <laughs> Good. Um, where are you? Where are you talking from? Uh, I'm talking from India, Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Nice. Thank you very much. Welcome. Uh, throw the ball of the of the presentation. Yeah. Uh, I'll pass it on to iPhone. I'll be, someone in the iPhone. That is yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> iPhone. Yes. Your sound. We can maybe see you right now, but we need. We... Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. My name is Yolanda. I'm in South Africa, uh, Johannesburg, same city as Shivani. Uh, yeah, it's 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 at night. <laughs> it's dark. But I don't think you'll be able to see it. <laughs> you can show also some part of your house. Or just uh, frame anything you want to share us from the place you are. <laughs> the bathroom. <laughs> <place. Okay. laughs> Love those blue tiles. In. That's Mommy Alanda. <laughs> <You're laughs> <Yolanda. One of laughs> <laughs> Yolanda, will you will you pass the the presentation to another one, to someone? We can, or maybe I can do it. I can do it. I think maybe. maybe person. Yeah. The next person I have here is maybe Jordi. Jordi, are you around? Jordi, I want to already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vonks. Brother Vonks. Sorry, I was trying to unmute. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. So I'm in Joburg, same Giovanni and uh, iPhone. And I've got 15% of my battery. So I just want to take you out quickly. I was playing with a blinds here. So this is the city mm. behind me. Okay. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you, brother. Ron. Who do I pass on to? <laughs> you, Sierra or Camilo? I think you're the chair people. You may pass it on. Yeah, I can pass it to Michelle. Michelle pre present. Hey, Michelle. <laughs> hello, hello. I just saw I'm the. Sure. Uh, hi, hi. I was on my computer working, doing terrible, boring university work, and then uh, Sierra's email popped through, and I thought, you know, I'm going to do this. <laughs> let me let me get on, and I was very excited to see South Africa. <laughs> so yeah, I'm looking forward to um, yeah to see what's up. Um, and so yeah, so I'm in the south of. Uh, 
South Africa, deep south in the in Cape Town. And yeah, like Giovanni said, it's past eight at night. Um, I'm living close to the city, well, in Woodstock. So I don't know, you probably just see lights. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A, it's, yeah, so it's very dark. It's, a, it's windy. Um, yeah, it's the, the windy city, Woodstock. So that's where I am in, in, in Cape Town. Or South Africa for the... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Thank you very much, Michelle. Right. Thank you. I can uh, I can ask so Sheeran that I think is the last one to, hey. to show hey. us where are you from and uh, and say hello, hello. Hello, hello. I'm <laughs> Shireen and I'm um Outside of Miami in Florida, the United States, it is 2.15 in the afternoon. Um, so I'm in your yesterday for some of you. I can show you. We have lots of things growing here. I have a farm school, so that's how I met Giovanni. We have some peppers. This is our growing season. This is where I'm wow. at right now. Bananas here. I don't... I think I'm showing you correctly. Wow. We have bananas growing. We have our moonflowers, my little nursery over there, and compost over here. And I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. It seems very beautiful. Thank you, Thank you very much for that sharing. Thank you, Shireen. We're not jealous at all. We're not oh, jealous at all. Anytime yeah. you want. Come on, <laughs> come on. Over, we have an extra room, so don't worry. Don't Bruno, worry. Bruno from Finland, for sure he will he will go. Well, very very uh, I'm like very very pleased to be possible and, and have this incredible option of talk with you all. Um, we are very happy with uh, with Sierra as we had oh, uh, like a very. Flow, fluent uh, connection with Giovanni as we invited him to come and talk today with us. I want to just uh, very quickly make a, may, like tell you about what is this audiovisual circle from or coming. We are with uh, Giovanni and with um, Sierra and some of the people that already talked here, part of an Ecoverse, it's called Ecoversities, it's a network, it's an alliance, it's a family, really it's a family. Of, uh, very connected people uh, throughout the world. It's very diverse also. Uh, this network, we are uh, trying to uh, share and meet uh, in lots of ways. And now um, with Sierra, we got also this option to be part of, um, of the publication circle that received last year, lots of audiovisuals from all around the world. And we had the opportunity to uh, be companions of that to share uh, and be and with uh, to the Echoverse with these audio, audiovisuals. We ended making a film festival last year in a, uh, in the global gathering of Echoversities that was virtual for uh, for the pandemics. But we had a festival there we hosted and we had a li little video maybe Sierra you can show it just to you have a little piece of uh, it was a trailer but a little piece of every single image from around the world mexico serbia india it was very beautiful do you have it sierra yeah i'm bringing it up right now um hold on i think maybe i didn't share my audio mm -hmm. classic mistake yeah meanwhile i'm saying hello to people arriving Thank you, Sierra. 
Well, this was just a, a little uh, trailer that we wanted to show. All the conversation, uh, very similar to the ones that we are doing today, are in the web page. So you can go and see, uh, we had also conversations with each video and you have all the links to the videos in high quality there in the web page. After that, we just began a, a stage where we are doing now these audiovisual circles with special people that we want to uh, celebrate from the audiovisual family in this Ecoverse. So, uh, well, today that's how we, we arrive to this moment where we are going to talk with Chabani. I'm going to leave Sierra to start this uh, deep conversation. Please feel free of uh, asking anything or uh, put your comments into the chat and we will give also space for your, all of us. It's a conversation. So, um, but we especially are going to have this space with Chebani. So please put it in the chat. You have all the, all the, all the guide there. Okay. Thank you very much. Sierra. Gracias, Camilo. <laughs> um, so the session we've um, come to this, the name of the session kind of came through the three of us. Um, it's called Seeding the Cracks of Imagination. Um, I'm super excited about it. <laughs> um, we're a full disclosure. We're, we're kind of, we're flowing. We don't have like a concrete plan. We're flowing with, um, you know, the wind. <laughs> and um, I think what we're going to do um, is uh, we're going to watch a short piece that the Shivani's um, community, the Reimagine, Reimagine Learning community put together around a festival called Knowledge and People. Um, so I'm going to share that. Um, but yeah, um, and then Shivani is going to say some things and share some stories and we're going to weave some other images and photos in. And we'll take it from there. Uh, is there anything else you want to say, Shivani, before I just launch into the video? No, uh, I'm just happy and grateful for everyone for showing up and being part of this journey and part of this experiment and feeling, because I think it's a feel. So also I want to extend the invitation to also close your eyes or to also just be receptive to, to feeling, not just seeing, not just listening, mm -hmm. but to feeling. And yeah, other than that, we can let the show grow. <laughs> All right. Here it goes. Knowledge in people and learning festival. It's time to remember. It's time to reconnect. It's time to sing and it's time to dance. It's time to tell our stories. It's a time to plant seeds. It's a time to walk tall. It's the time to remember Ubuntu. It's the time to heal our disconnect. Let's join together. And we ignite. Knowledge in people. Reimagining how we learn. So we can create a better tomorrow. Collectively support our regenerative learning community. I got chills the first time I watched that, and I just got chills again. Um, um, yeah, so that's a little glimpse into the community there. And I just wanted to say that Shivani and I um, and Camilo and many of us met for the first time at an Ecoversities gap gathering in Mexico. And I remember Shivani just um, just kind of in introducing myself and asking people about, you know, where they're from and you know, what they're up to. And Shivani sharing just, you know, even before I saw any of these images or videos, 
I really knew much just like the passion and like I just love with which he shared about his community was yeah totally like impacted me and I was like okay I need to know more about this place it sounds really magical and so um part of this audiovisual circle is is the idea is really to kind of there are so many ecoversities out there and so many projects that are so diverse and um there's so much happening you know and changing and moving and um And so sometimes it's, you know, we talk to each other and we get to know each other a little bit um, at gatherings and on Zoom calls, but really um, just like the colors and the, and the sounds and the smells, like the, the energy of the spaces, um, sometimes it's, it's hard to like, you know, really feel that. And so, yeah, the best thing is to go and visit, which we're going to (laughs) do, we're going to come visit you. Um, there and yeah looking at the images um, yeah that's like all that comes to me is like I want to go so but yeah the closest thing to being there is to um, kind of uh, see what's the, the power of audio visuals right so to, to see and listen and so yeah without saying more so I feel like I've talked too much already Giovanni I want to welcome you to to yeah share from your heart whatever it is that you feel called to this moment. Thanks for being here. Sheen. Sheen. Thank you. Thank you, Sierra. <laughs> uh, Shabbat, I think maybe I can start with a small little introduction and context as to the maybe. So we, we are in the southern tip of Africa. Uh, the city Johannesburg was built on uh, this idea of the gold rush that happened. So that's all uh, people from around the world, specifically Western powers, come in and generate or yeah, put together the city. Uh, also, yeah, with it is a lot of what we now realize is a lot of sort of the the shit or the pollution or the toxins of that system and that world, that old world, that sort of was very sort of aggressive to its relationship with, with people, aggressive to its relationship with the land and aggressive with its relationship to the unseen. And weirdly enough, where we located is actually on um, on, on an old ancient uh, elephant uh, migration uh, sort of way. It's the, the valley that we in, this Bears Valley, was a, actually an old ancient migration space for elephants. And there's a river that runs, that is like the daylight here for the first time, like, under in under maybe 30 meters from the center, there's a river that daylights for the first time that runs all the way to Mozambique called the Jaske River. Uh, but in that first sort of meter, in that first sort of like three, five meters, the waters are extremely polluted. So fresh spring water that flows all the way to, to the Indian Ocean through Mozambique, through South Africa. In the first five minutes of its appearance, it becomes like intoxicated by factories, industries, and yeah, and 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 that is that discovers that's sort of part of the the elements that that brought and that birthed sort of the space. So that goes, I think that that sort of is a metaphor on also a reality for for the people that. A lot of people were brought here and I still exist here. And there's this feeling of being lost. There's a feeling of disconnection. And it's not unique to South Africa. It's something that is this feeling of human displacement is, is, is a global pandemic. <laughs> uh, and, and weirdly enough, what, 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 what I'm currently feeling uh, is that the soil remembers so the soil remembers, and uh, an example. So back to the sort of introduction of this name, seeding imagination, uh, and like so, the property runs through. There's like this old, I can I can call it a river path that 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 runs through the the property. And traditionally, there's a lot of plastics, pollutions, like everything from sanitary towels, condoms, whole bunch of stuff that just run through the property, creating maze of massive pollution. And this is a space where a lot of young people come to. So it's like a red flag uh, in terms of just like the idea of safety. However, with this, and time time was sort of the testing uh, element here, with this, 
what 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 was unseen yes the 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 the, the, the plastics and the bottles and all of, all of this was was very present because you can actually physically see that but what was unseen was the idea of seeds there was a bunch of seeds from tomato seeds to pepper seeds that also was being rushed down and was part of the pollution and now in this space where there was once where there's a bit of soil erosion and was uh, or continues to have this weird relationship with litter there is a, a huge amount of food growing and i would like to sort of relate that to our space and so we in this Joburg city that also has like i told you its isms and and contexts and poverties and oppressions and powers that exist and it's very visible all of us live day to day through it however there's this weird thing that happens that in this space that's densely populated is there's a site called the reimagined learning center that has this history of being sort of a community site that i have come to be a custodian for uh and it's in this space that imagination has been sort of the massive invitation and the, mass, the, the imagination specifically starting from the point of the young people. Our space is uh, curated and facilitated by the energies of young people. We, we, we are said to be an unschooling space or a self-directed education space uh, that, 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 that is the soil name remembering against the asphalt. That is the soil of belonging and connection remembering against everything that tells you or that makes you sort of gives you the sensation of disconnect. And it's through, as you can see through the visuals, it's through community, it's through the simple act of being together that we are experiencing this, this feeling, this, this sensation of education. Nothing that, can, that is triggered by a book or nothing that is triggered by power, not necessarily a book. The book is not the problem, it's the power, it's nothing yeah, it's, it's, so it's a space where the power relations are reimagined or at least are up for conversation and also realized to be imagination. So every single concept that we have in this world is someone's imagination. Somebody imagined it. So instead of holding on to, in, into, onto imaginations of a yesteryear or, to, or, or previous people, we're looking at young people and their imaginations being sort of an invitation for us, not just for healing, but for connection, for belonging, for, 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 for thinking definitely, for being definitely. And yeah, so, 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 so the, I, I was just telling Sierra that I find it so difficult to sort of be audience to myself when I explain our project and what it is that's going on, uh, because it's constantly moving and constantly shaking. And the visuals that you saw was from a festival we hosted, and I'm so happy for Vonks to be here because Vonks was part of this festival uh, where a collective of people just came together for one reason, just to be together. And it's in being together that there was intention to share together. And we shared everything from where we are, how we are, to food, to our, our beliefs, to the, our differences. And it's in that sort of liminal space of, of, of differences and diversity that we have found belonging and connection. And that goes on to sort of the world that we want to reimagine, a space that we want to sort of be part of more so than, than the things that are actually around us. So yeah, the Reimagined Learning Center is a, is a, is a commons, a social commons for, for, that puts imagination first and community first and love first. And, and not love as in the kumbaya, olden hands, there's that part of it, but there's also parts that deal with anxiety, there's parts that deal with fear, there's that part parts that deal with like validation. I'm currently dealing still with validation issues in terms of, I don't believe sometimes where I am and how I am. Uh, and, and yeah, I find that's sort of also why I struggle to put the experience into words because I'm, I, I'm still dealing with validation issues as to, yeah, is it, is it valid in this world? Is it okay in this world? Is, is being weird and being normal and going against the grain okay? And yeah, so the Reimagined Learning Center, the community allows, what for me, it allows me to, 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 to deal with that question and lean into that question to feel that sort of weird feeling more. And it's in that, that, that I find a deeper connection. I compost, yeah, we compost our feelings and compost what's going wrong and turn it into worm castings or worm pee. And that sort of is, is a microbial element in, in, in human life and human connection. 
Great. We are reimagining today with those words. We are reimagining um, the world today. We want to weave also audiovisually. So um, we have lots of pictures and we have lots of more videos that we want to show you all that Giovanni shared us. We, we, we've been talking with Giovanni for a while to, to uh, decide which gifts today share, share in this space. Uh, thank you also for those, um, that presentation. Like I know it's so difficult to talk about um, life and uh, an echo words like this that you are uh, today sharing with us. So um, we want to go also and share this uh, video uh, the, the second video that we have uh, from, um, uh, this is a drum space, no? It's not like a class as you, as we will say, no, in this um, echo verse, but we want to show also this so we can dip more in some ways with your words and also the audiovisual pieces you brought us to here. Sierra, do you have maybe the, this, this moment? Yeah, here it goes. Yay. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> we will share all the links also after. So you can watch them. Sorry. Don't want to look. Just stick to the rhythm, ne? Let's, let's take it again, ne? If your hands are sore, you're gonna be master dramas, guys. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing comes easy before it, ne? Just shake your hands. If you got it, so no, you can't cry. Let's take it again, ne? Same rhythm, ne? Remember? Okay. <laughs> Okay. okay, I'm gonna keep you. This is the break, I'm gonna keep you the break. You know, somebody when somebody did a song in a choir, you know, if the backing are uh, like not strong, you know, they don't attack with confidence, you know, it's like ah, this song is weak. Now from the beginning, we take it with power. Okay, are you ready? This is how you position your trap Yeah, sorry, it's just hard to grab. You must grab with your feet.
<laughs> Beautiful. Hey, um, Giovanni, I have a question for you. Yes. Well, it's not a question. It's 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 to get to get deep into into this um, echoverse, as I'm saying, Giovanni's echoverse. Um, uh, and um, I, I'm also, uh, I've, I've had also the pleasure and the option of life to be companion and to uh, be part of spaces with uh, lots of people, children and young people. And watching this uh, moment, going deep into this, uh, this reimagining the unschool, but going into this drum session that takes us also to our um, to Africa, for example, for me, even though I'm in Colombia, we have lots of roots and here drums are so important, but it, like that sound give us also like that uh, deep, deep collective knowledge and, 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 and being part of family, no siblings. Um, but I want, I want to see the, I want to listen from you, your, your point of view and how you've been living to be also part and have the option of being part of those kind of spaces and create them and co-create them with the children as as as, as I know you are um, a big a big uh, uh, referent of this ecoverse in South Africa because of that like I've learned especially I, I remember lots of talks with you and uh, listening also about uh, what's happening there with the children and with the people in fact the, all the community you have how is it feel to uh, be part of and have that option and be and be part of the reimagining of education? Hey, thank you for the question, Camilo. I think yeah, that's a, that's a that's a big one. And I recently like became a father for just sharing that with everyone. And I think it's from the perspective of a parent that we realize that how important, or, or simply like the idea of parent. For a lot of us, the word, the word parent either means two, and in the majority of contexts, uh, means sometimes one person. Uh, and that feels scary. That feels, once again, it feels messed up. And the realities of it is messed up. So the idea of the invitation that the community provides me Parenting can mean now 20 people. Parenting doesn't necessarily have to mean somebody that has children. It could be somebody that is just in tune with the child selves. And that could be sometimes a five-year-old. So inviting a five-year-old to also be somewhat parenting. Because I think in my experience thus far, just being part of it. So I in, in, in the space, I, I regard myself to be uh, uh, a listener. I'm, I'm, I'm audience to, to, to learning. I'm audience to learning. More so than, than somebody learning. I am learning, of course, but it's like having the ability to, 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 to notice learning in spaces that some of our eyes have been blinded to see learning, uh, to notice development, to notice connection, to notice raw emotion. And it, I think the biggest one, to notice forgiveness, that is the biggest one. So just being in a space with young people and having this ability for them to, 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 to forgive so easily and, 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 and to make peace so easily uh, has been more so probably one of my biggest sort of learnings. And in, 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 in being part of the space, especially... More so now with, with regard to the ideas of parenting, I'm learning how to forgive myself for messing up and making mistakes, forgive myself for being wrong. Uh, and that is sort of built, that, that sort of relationship with forgiveness has built a culture within the space. So when, whenever a new person joins or a new family joins the center, we have this rule. The one rule we have is like, in order to be part of the center, you have to make 100 mistakes. So... This came from young people and the culture of young people and their relationship with mistakes that they are ever forgiven. So they hold space for mistakes. They see mistakes to be a very important part of play, a very important part of learning. And so in terms of somebody in, com in the community or being receptive to the community, uh, a lot of things have become somewhat easier and, and elements of solidarity 
have shown up like they've never shown up before in my life. And not solidarity, like something that an NGO or NPO has a quota to sort of create. More like solidarity with regard to a famous sort of African quote, which is the Ubuntu, the, 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 which translates to the idea that I am because of you and that we are all connected. And the, the community provides me an opportunity to feel that, to feel belonging, to feel like my family is not just something to do with blood relations, but it can actually just be like, 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 like you and I, our family, Camilo, and like Sierra and I, our family, and like a lot of the people that we've worked with in this group uh, that are here with us today, that we can regard them to be family and, and not family just of the flesh, but family of the spirit. And yeah, so it's this receptiveness. It's this idea of not being alone, the idea of not being weird alone and not being embarrassed alone and not have been alone with your mistakes, feeling safe and feeling held in the ability to make mistakes and in the beautiful nature of learning, which is this messy experience that is life. Uh, so I think a big part of, 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 of what, 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 what I am currently feeling and receiving is a sense of home, a sense of connection, a sense of of being together. In 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 not being together once again, like this aesthetic of being together, that's beautiful, but more of being together, like the idea of a worm farm. I don't know if anybody of you guys seen a worm farm, but it's this idea that this sort of messiness of of of, of what we regard waste to be is is reconsidered and it's Waste is, is seen as an opportunity for the most critical point of re regrowth and regeneration. So I see, I see the space to be very receptive to, to, to understanding me as a human, not as a perfect being, but as a being, a being in process. And that is, yeah, that is, that is I think, something that I'm currently feeling in this moment. I, I, I would like to take all those words that uh, move so much the, the move me and move I, I suppose uh, all these echo verse that we're also creating in this just moment and I'm so happy to to have those also uh, that to share to share with with you we have some pictures and also we have uh, after a gift it's a video that was made with all those pieces that Chevani had brought us through the preparation of this moment, uh, to a video with a small, a small gift we are going to give at the end. But meanwhile, we want also to open the microphones and um, and see if uh, there's some um, uh, some some comments, some 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 words also from uh, all these people that is uh, is watching right now this here um, with us in the Zoom call. And if you have anything to say to Chevani. Any question you have also to to for him that can also give us some uh, some new knowledge and exchange of in this audiovisual circle today? It's open. Please open your microphones. Sierra also, and if you if you have some pictures also, we can we can share meanwhile and uh, continue listening for a while to Giovanni. Yeah, uh, Camilo. Maybe before we jump into uh, the. Um... Just people sharing thoughts or questions. I just want to share a couple of really short clips. I'll, sh I'll show you. I wish I could share all of the photos and the videos that Shivani just kind of like dumped a whole bunch of things into a Google Drive and was like, here's what I have. And so <laughs> there's so much, so many gems in there. Um, but there's just a couple just based on what you shared already that I wanted to just pop in here really quickly. Um, this one, you can, I think. You can, Giovanni, also comment. Meanwhile, if you see something inspires you, you can also comment us. Yeah, I think uh, you're talking about, you know, seeding the cracks um, and then kind of transforming the space where, you know, there was a lot of trash and just a lot of like pollution into something beautiful and the art and like the aliveness. This, I think this, this short clip really shows a lot of that. Mm 
<laughs> See, now when I add that, like, it's crazy that in that bit over there, that, that, that space was a space in which we dug out. So a lot of the, the property was built with rubble and refuge. So that space over there that uh, Sebastian, also a self-taught artist uh, that followed passion and followed imagination and actually wrote about and, and is working with doing, doing paintings from a space of dreaming. So dreaming as a, a pedagogy of dreaming. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the, his work is in and around that. So, so that bit over there, we, we pulled out like a washing machine. Uh, an old rubble washing machine because that was used to sort of create that sort of somewhat of a terrace. So yeah, from that space that the girl in the picture, her name is Tomiko. Uh, I think she's like seven or nine between those ages, between that age. And she and the sisters one day sat with me to fill this tray full of seedlings. And that is them a few months later after a second wave of lockdown harvesting some of the letters that went on to feed and continues to feed till this day like weirdly enough there's still letters in the ground in that bed uh all, all, all of our families and just provides yeah once again the center provides opportunities for change making so the young people see themselves as part of their household and not like audience to their household or, or sort of inferiors of the household so yeah they sort of brought home food uh, as adults would normally bring home bread and butter uh, the young people also realize that they stand the opportunity to also bring bring change into into their homes so that's that those photos are testimony to that just how young people activated change simply and it wasn't work it wasn't laborious it was actually we forgot about even planting the seeds and yeah it was quite a beautiful beautiful little moment there so gorgeous. Um, just so there's another one that I really need to show. <laughs> but it's, um, I think, yes, as you're speaking kind of to, you know, the, your new role as parent, but really, you know, you've been parenting all along and with, with all of these young people and, and kind of um, that journey. Um, I think this super short clip just like speaks so much to that process um, and also to my own process in that way. So now I'm going to start it over. This is me learning to trust young people. (laughs) I love this one. (laughs) I'm going to play it one more time. This is so short. This is me learning to trust young people. So so there, uh, Makeda's on the edge of the table with the tippy toes. And what to, to, to an adult, it might look risky. It might look like she doesn't know what she's doing, like she's vulnerable or, or needs an adult in that moment in space and time. However, if you observe, she's actually busy. It's like stacking blocks up like dominoes. So she's in a meditation of balance. She's in a meditation of, of, of being connected to where she is on the table. However, I stand a chance at that moment to be an enemy of progress or an enemy of, 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 oh, sorry. I stand a moment of not trusting. Simply said, I stand a moment of not trusting. Not trusting that she's aware, not trusting that she's equipped, not trusting that she wants to be alive as much as I wanted to be alive. And I've, I've captured that moment as a reflection and reminded to myself that Young people can be trusted. And in that moment, she never felt nothing happened, nothing weird happened. Like she was all okay. She she, she carried on building and, and eventually got bored and, and went on to do something else. However, in that moment, I almost interfered and I almost said, whoa, stop or get off or hey, you know, that adult thing, that weird adult thing that we do where we think we have power. Yeah, that that's a moment that is a constant meditation in me learning to trust and not just trust the scene, not just trust with my eyes, but to also trust the unseen, that there's also energies that are also like breath and our heartbeats. We, none of us are thinking about our heartbeat or breathing now, really. Like, guys, come on. But yet it's happening. There's this force that is like pushing us to, it's pushing us, it's sustaining us forcefully in sometimes, you know what I mean? And yeah, so, so we're looking at learning as breath, looking at learning as that moment, looking at life as that moment where we trust in every day or every second that 
the next breath is going to just go through our bodies. And that's trusting that learning is happening and trusting that we are connected. So, yeah, that, that, I think that moment there just speaks, speaks, speaks volumes on, on a lot of issues around children and the way we see children. And it also speaks on a lot of healing and ways in which we can cap, catch ourselves uh, and, and heal ourselves through the experience of young people being who they authentically are. Thanks, Giovanni. And yes, as Camilla said, if you have um, anything you want to share, especially those that came later at the very beginning, we did introductions and everyone kind of shared a little bit about themselves. Um, so if you've sh showed up later in the middle of the session, if you'd like to open your mic and just share who you are a little bit about where you are in this moment um, and anything that has moved or is that com that's coming through you from, from what you've heard and seen in the session, that would be amazing. Meanwhile, um, while someone uh, opens its microphone, we are encouraging if we, there's any anything. We want uh, also to um, ask you all to start thinking about any gift as uh, any link you can leave us from uh, any audiovisual you can share us. It could be a video made from from you or very famous or something like that that talks about the place you are so please start thinking about any link or anything you can leave us uh, this is going to be for the checkout that we are starting to close this uh, audiovisual circle uh, in, in some minutes but meanwhile really we want to open uh, ask you to open your microphones if you have something to share for Giovanni or to ask to Giovanni, please feel free uh, today in this audiovisual circle. We are connecting with South Africa. I'm just uh, also telling you. Um, Um, like I have a video, small video to share. Uh, which Again, I, like essential ones. Um, please wave with your. Camila, you cut out for a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you cut out for a minute, and, and Puja was sharing something, but it's all good. <laughs> the trickster, the the zoom is. <laughs> so many cracks. Pooja, you were, you were saying you have a video to share. You're welcome to share it in, in the, the, if you have the link, share it in the chat and we can all check it out later. Yeah, yeah. sure, I'll just do that. That'd be great, thanks. May I, um, if it's fine, may I just ask Please. a question, Shivani? You know, I, I, so I love what you, what you said, especially um, with a young girl and trust. Uh, it's, it's not easy, you know, um, sort of the, the protector in you kicks in very quick. Um, and sometimes perhaps it's the overprotector in you that kicks in, <laughs> you know, to some extent. But the whole um, genesis of the Reimagined Learning Center, I just want to know your background and how you came to it. You know, um, obviously, it's, it's more like a conception um, at some point before it ever existed. So it's something that you conceived, but that conception came from somewhere or some experience or, or learning of sorts. So I'm interested in knowing that history and background and how you arrived at it, because I personally love it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely place. It's a lovely uh, setup that you have. And it definitely I can see the, the, the product of it, you know, the value of it. Um, but I, I want to know the originator. Um, that's, the, that's sort of the question I have. I want to know the originator of this beautiful product, you know, and how you arrived at it. What are the seeds? <laughs> um, before you answer that, I just wanted to acknowledge that we're at an hour after... The session is supposed to be an hour. We're at an hour. Um, so I want to respect everyone's time. Um, I also would love to hear the answer to that 
uh, question. <laughs> Giovanni, I don't know how much time you have, if you have an extra like 10 minutes or something to stick around. Okay, cool. And then maybe Bruno, if you, if you have your hand raised, so I'm wondering if you'd want to like piggyback onto that question or if you want to wait till after Giovanni answers that one and then maybe. I'm, I'm okay with leaving it there if that's fine. Okay, <laughs> okay. Up to you. In scene, so I can jump in right into it. So we, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't think there's a real point of genesis, like an actual locked of space where this happened. Or I think it was it's all a collection of things. Everything from when, when I was born. Uh, so my mom works in education. I grew up in this education. Like some people grew up in a religious household where the family is pastors. I grew up in a household where my family was teachers. Uh, and yeah, there came my time to sort of pass the baton. However, I had a weird experience with education where I spent a lot of time at my dad's workshop and it was through relationality that I, 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 I was learning. And uh, yeah, there came a time uh, within my, when I went to university that I, I was an active researcher, so I like, enjoyed reading and, and learning about stuff already at that age at like at university more so and I had ability to sit in front of all my lectures and I actually had arguments straight up arguments with my lecturers because I sort of saw between the cracks I saw cracks in what they were doing and I and I held them accountable and eventually I lost it it started feeling it never felt like anything it's like the sand was moved was was falling between my fingers with regard to this idea of education and yeah, then weirdly enough, uh, I, I walked out of the varsity and it was sort of segued into financial need for financial security. And I found an ad on our classifieds uh, in the country in here in South Africa that said superhero needed to teach five kids. And I was given free roam to, 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 to play with relationality because there was no curriculum. So it was basically what my mom and what my grandmother did when we went to their house, sort of the setup of kids on the floor. And every day we went to sort of build stuff in the, in the, in the, in the yard, uh, climb trees, make songs. And it's there that I had the ability, because I studied curriculum, I had the ability to account for learning. So I saw four-year-olds in games, they would count like, ah, minus one or oh, minus two, because you lose a point each time. And it was through games that they were, and this was like at four years old. So the, so the African curriculum says that, in, that negative numbers get introduced at like when you're 10 years old or something of that nature. Yet there was these moments of emergence of, of like heavy learning that the world said shouldn't happen because they're not old enough or they wouldn't grasp it. And yeah, I started learning about unschooling and, 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 and I said that, yeah, it's that now felt like concrete. And as I said, this is something I would want for myself because it validates my mom, it validates my grandmom, it validates my experience in taxis, it validates my experiences with people like below the poverty line that sometimes I wouldn't even reference to be doctors or, or practitioners of education or learning. Um, and I realized it's actually normal to learn everywhere else, in, anywhere else. It even makes dreaming a valid space for learning and yeah with young people it's through their imagination and their trust and their faith and their playing that i realized that that is the site of 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 like what intelligence or the site of magic or the site of 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 movement uh it made it it, it fed my soul and it's that that i sort of I don't know. I never. This is. I, I couldn't have done it alone. This, this. I never did it alone. And I'm still. I'm still. I'm still a custodian of this of the movement. But it's not. It wasn't me. I never even had children to do all of these things. So it's like it's people and it's stories of ostracization. It's stories of invalidations. It's stories of a broken education system. It's it's a story of mothers trusting that they knew their kids better than what the system did, and trusting that they weren't alone with it and and hoping to find someone else that can also validate that they knew their kids better than what this system did and yeah it's it's a mixture of compost of trauma of anxiety and validation stuff uh, once again that sort of birthed this it's absolute shit that birthed this it's absolute like 
or worse things that birthed, birthed this. It's nothing to do with like there was a plan to change the world. No, 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 no. There was actually just a plan to do things differently. And it just so happened to show up currently as to what it looks like. What it will look like tomorrow or what it will look like next year, I have no idea because there's no real plan. It's all, there is a plan somewhere in the cosmos, but it's we are just audience and every day have the ability to be to be part of it and that's that's what i'm learning because now as a parent also another chapter to it it's like whoosh. so yeah i hope that answers it <laughs> beautiful <sighs> um hi everyone I was hoping I would, I'm um, sorry, is Hi. it okay if I just introduce myself? Please do, My please do. Hi, <laughs> welcome. Late. I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> no worries. Um, I wasn't feeling well, but I'm feeling much better now. And uh, my name is Nontla Um, And I am, I, my ch- I have children at the center. I'm also a learner mm. at the center and also a parent at the center. And yeah, um, Shivani, thank you so much for this. Uh, thank you for sharing. You know, I just love what you said now about, you know, trusting what you gave birth to, trusting, you know, um, who you gave birth to, you know, and that's all it is. You know, um, if you know what you gave birth to, then, you know, then you're not going to be scared into letting go and, and, and trusting every step it's you know it's a huge huge step being able to take your children to that kind of a setup um you're trusting yourself and you're also trusting that you are not you've given birth to to amazing beings you know um and um that's all it is like every day you know you we get more confident when we see the wonderful work that you do um with the children and when they come home you know you're hearing them speak you're hearing them you seeing them do things and you're like wow <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> we're winning you know and um so yeah we're winning this well done in kulu so <laughs> right. thank, thank you very you, much thank you for sharing that oh wow i think i think we still have a video to say goodbye to this moment but still i think we have more time maybe bruno you still want to 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 you want to comment a little bit? I think we still we, we, we can make it long. If anyone has to go, we understand. But we are still sharing. We have still the moment of sharing uh, videos from the places we are coming from. So before you go, please share something there. And if not, and uh, uh, we are going to be a little bit longer. Uh, hearing also uh, some other voices. Bruno, go ahead. Sure. Actually, I'm the one who should go already to sleep, but I'm happy to be here. So it's going to be your fault that tomorrow I will be tired in the morning. So feel bad, all of you. No, just kidding. Um, No, I just wanted to ask you, uh, Giovanni, like, um, how would you get in, in a discussion with people who, who might be in a bit of a opposite place regarding education than you? And because that moment of the kid in, on the edge of the table, right? That takes a lot to explain someone from outside, like how you were even like allowing that, right? Or just in that place without freaking out, even though you might have been freaking out, but you know, how, how would you get engaged in that discussion with, with that, that type of people? Because I feel many of us are a bit in that situation of having a certain understanding on education and, and and being in this situation of talking with others and at least I'm finding it really challenging so I don't know if if you have any any thoughts about that I know it's a tricky or difficult question but just how how you see it thank you see 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 thank you Bruno and yeah I think that's yeah. definitely a question I I engaged like daily even to myself to sort of also because my mind also asks I ask myself Giovanni what what the hell are you doing <laughs> you know what I mean like are you doing the right thing all these families they they yeah and and you have this sort of weird leadership position that I'm also trying to understand and 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 deny at times uh so I think I, for long, I used to be very sort of reactionary, like in terms of us and them with my thinking of institutions and our space. And 
there was just so, so much sort of weight to carry because I realized that through learning, there's no fight. Uh, there, there, there's only learning. So it's simply, it's simply this, that there's, there's, so everyone's, everyone's way of learning is as unique as, a, as their fingerprint. So that's, that's like, uh, at least it's, it's, it was proven in some sort of weird uh, university, I think. Uh, so for me, learning, how, 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 how do you engage it and how do you explore the diversity of it, I think is the question. Because I think the, we, we have this homogenous sort of thinking as to reading, for instance, shows up when a child is in front of an adult and there's a book and there's instruction to read. Uh, but in my life, in my world, reading is going to the shop and trying to find the right baked beans. Uh, where you know there's a, there's there's all these words and there's all this trying to make sense sense making and I think yeah I think questions around uh, the earliest form of learning so questions around how do how do people learn how to talk how do people learn how to walk uh, why a good one is why don't children bounce on bricks the way they bounce on the couch and it's in 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 investigating that one that you will see that. There's a knowing, there's a learning, there's, there's actual uh, sense making that the bricks are hard and the bricks stand a chance to hurt you. Whereas the couch has this other weird experience of, of, of being bouncy and fun. And, and so that means that there, there, there is, there's, there's learning somewhere. And I think like, yeah, I think for adults, there's, 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 there's always going to be a conversation around how learning is supposed to be show up. And that's just due to our history of how we, were conditioned to see learning. However, I think every every adult that I ask that I speak to about this, I, I ask this question as how many things have you learned outside of school? Another sort of trigger for us, or another sort of invitation question is a day we have at the center. It's called Learn Nothing Day, a day that we all try to learn nothing. And it's a challenge and invitation for everybody in this space. I I advise you guys or invite you guys to sort of make tomorrow a Monday, a no learning day. Like try not to learn anything. Try it, guys. It's like impossible. So as soon as we have invitations like that, uh, we can now start to account for learning in a very different way. And we realize, yo, guys, there's learning happening everywhere. Dreaming, where I'm going to the toilet, where when I'm at the funeral, when I'm at the wedding, when I'm at where, when, when I'm sitting down and just observing and thinking. And even when my eyes are closed, that, yeah. So, so I think the invitation is more like to disrupt that idea of learning by questioning or inviting thinking into exploring other sides of learning that aren't mainly institutional. And as soon as we can get a grasp on other sides of learning, I think that also opens up space to think about learning differently. Thank you. Thank you. I just have a related um, comment or question. So, Giovanni, how do the the children relate to sort of schooling and unschooling? Because in in your space, there's a unlearning and unschooling. I certainly find that students in the university find it very hard to unlearn. They always want the rubric. They always want guidelines, even when they're given the opportunity to just be creative. So. Yes, I just want, you know, your thoughts also about children going between the spaces and what do, you know, what do they say and they bring about the ideas of unschooling? So uh, on that question, thank you very much for the question, Michelle. It's, I think the unschooling is for everybody around the kids. The unschooling is not really for the kids. The unschooling is for those that have been schooled. So it's, uh, the, it's unschooling the environment, unschooling... Uh, the adults uh, unschooling sort of our, our relationship with the space it's that's that that idea or that space right there of of us just being sensitive or being being yes yeah, being sensitive to the idea that we could be wrong simply that like if you live your life and live that moment in which you interact with a young person or anybody really even with yourself interacting with yourself and and embrace the idea that you could be wrong uh, that that sort of uh, is a, is a big factor, and what I've seen is that kids that come from the mainstream school system, once they enter the space or they form part of the community, 
or at least the, the experiment for, 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 for lack of better words, is that they, there's an ease, there's an ease and other things show up. Like, for instance, the one parent spoke about how every day coming from school, both, both the child and both the parent were exhausted and tired. And that also made, uh, it, it was a terrible space for conversation because now we're forced to ask this question, how was your day? And we're both tired and having a miserable day. Whereas now sort of, there's just conversation in the house because there's no, there's no prompting of questions. It's more like the, the, the culture of questioning more than the prompting of questioning where everybody shares freely what it is they're going through because they relate to each other more and because they want to share, not because they are prompted to. So, yeah, I think it's, it's definitely the, the parents and the infrastructure around the young people that is, that is the, where the unschooling is. It's, I don't think yeah, the young people are that. Because like I told you, a simple element of forgiveness. For me, the way young people share that and experience that, that is definitely an unschooled version of forgiveness. And I think as adults, we're holding on still to still the schooled version of forgiveness. Uh, and that is sometimes so much heavier and so much deeper and unnecessary and feels just so too burdened. It feels too sticky uh, compared to the way young people understand it. So it's like allowing us to see freedom and allowing us to to be present for liberation and also realizing when we are being oppressive in our simple humanness yeah see Shireen? i'd love to speak yeah. on, there's so many Giovanni was like a segue into what i wanted to talk about which is about vulnerability and that the in the chat I put in um, a TED talk. It's it's okay, but it's uh, a good launching point for talking about vulnerability. What does that mean? We cannot have connection with whether it's with a student or with another person without being vulnerable, and that takes a level of trust, but also takes a level of. Um, allowing yourself to be vulnerable, right? And as the educator or the guide or the oldest person in the room in, in a learning space like that, um, it's allowing yourself to be a vulnerable person. Um, and I think about, you know, the university, I feel like it's a, it's a hard place because the point of the university is the academy, right? To participate in the production of knowledge and to publish. And there's, there's an expectation, right? Of what the university is and so, um, I think part of it, though, is there's a shift in what we are needing from our educators. And really, it's before they were keeper of knowledge, right? They could read, they could write, they could. So now, we're, as, as a global, I mean, in the United States, most of the people can read and write. I we're not at 100%, but we're definitely uh, above the 80 80%. Um, and so now what? If you can Google everything, so what's my role? What's, how are we shifting our dynamics? What is the learning space for then if, if all the content is there, even in the university level? If I can learn how to uh, be an eye surgeon by YouTube, or I don't know, I don't actually know if all that information is out there, but a lot of information, structural information is out there and can be Googled. Um, and so really what we're working on is the fine, pieces of being a human being within the classroom the fine like and that means for us too right like there are mirrors into who we are and that takes vulnerability so when a student asks me Ms. Shreen, I have a question I'm like I don't know if I have the answer but let's find out together because yeah. most of the time I'm googling just right before you are so <laughs> I'll show you the correct sources I'll show you what's a, a, a credible source versus something that might be garbage and how to clear out your um, and your algorithm so that you're getting new but I'm not here with all the knowledge right and then the other part I was thinking about is the conduit right we're the conduit as a student shows us what they who they are and what they want to be we connect them with the people that are aligned with that right so if you have an artist you give them artists you give them paint if they're an art if they're a musician you you expose them to recording studios if they're a robotics um geared person and you you connect them to people who are experts in that field so that they can focus who they are i think that the role of the educator is shifting into that conduit 
having enough information. And so what we have to do as educators is to do our work. We have to do our inner work. We have to be cultured. We have to be learned. We have to be, and learn it in a different way, not just reading, writing, but really learn it about our emotional state. What does it mean to be a human in this world so that we can help them? And then they show us where we need to, what parts we need to fix. <laughs> Like a student called me Shireen the other day. I was like, you mean Miss Shireen? Like, <laughs> so I'm like, maybe I need to fix that. Maybe I need to work on why am I so attached to the Miss? What what about that is like really triggering for me to not be called by my first. I am Miss Shireen. So my first name's in there, but the, the Miss has to go there and it's something I need. And why am I hanging on to that? You know, and so they are the mirror to me. And the last part I was thinking about is like, I'm a mother of three. I can't teach my children. I've tried it. It can't be for me. I understand my children and I will place them in the place that they need to be in. But in order for us to survive, <laughs> I can't be their educator. I have, to, I have to find them a space or build them a space in which I can feel comfortable to give my children to you because I know that you're going to um, help them to grow, right? Um, and so although we know our children well, whether they're gifted to you or they come through you, um, for some of us, even though I'm an educator and teacher and we have a long line of teachers and educators, I can't teach my children. And so I need to, you know, that's I think another role for the educator is to be able to, to have a space for um, the relationship between parent and educator to be really um, solid and, um, yeah, and to hear what the parents are saying, but also allow them to be a place of um, a safe place. Yeah, so that's it. All of that was really, thank you, Chevani, as always. It's always, you're my brother. I'm, he's like a brother from another, like just another, we were split. Our egg cells were split and sent, he was sent to South Africa. I was sent to, to Miami. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you very much for all those words, thoughts. We don't want to say goodbye yet as we have still a audiovisual gift made by Sierra with all the uh, Chevani's uh, images he brought to us to for preparing this. So uh, please, Sierra, show that so we can uh, put that. So we can just finish after this with some other... Um, Goodbyes and uh, so that is as we will say. Beautiful. I'm just gonna quickly pop in a really, really short story if that's okay. Just I can't help myself but share it. Um, so I've been, <laughs> I've been, um, I, I shared a, a link in the chat. Um, it's just about this movement that I've been involved in recently. Um, protecting ancient trees from getting cut down. And it's very much tied with the indigenous communities. I've been learning so much by being there and just like listening to the stories of elders around the campfire. And this is something that I wanted for my whole life. I've been like really siloed into like a very, anyways, different kind of world um, growing up. And so it's like, I'm getting into to just listening to so many stories from the land and just resonated so deeply. And then when you were sharing, Shireen, it just like came popped up for me so clearly um one of the elders was sharing that in their culture um there's just kind of this unsaid unspoken but like um kind of obvious way of being in relationship to each other which is that the role of the parents was always one of sort of unfailing unconditional love and care and like nurture and a safe space and that the roles of the other community members the uncles and the aunties was that of of guide of like holding them accountable for you know when they're you mess up kind of um teaching um all those other kinds of roles that um kind of calling them out on you know bad behavior like all of those kinds of necessary things but that was never ever ever the parent role um, the parent role was like the sacred role to just be a safe nurturing space. And it made so much sense to me. And I was like, oh, how did we lose this? It like everything would be so different if, um, if that's how, yeah, that's how our relationships were structured. So, and that's what I see is happening in, in your community. Shivani, thank you so much for, um, giving us an insight into, yeah, the, because culture can always be created and um 
Uh, and so, yeah, just beautiful to see. And thank you for all your gifts. <laughs> and I will share this last piece with you. In the sun, you know what I mean, don't you know? Butterflies are having fun, you know what I mean. Sleep in peace when they're done, you know what I mean. And this old world is a new world and a bold world for me, yeah. Stars, when you shine, you know how I feel. Scent of the pine, you know how I feel. Oh, freedom is mine, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. I'm feeling good. Mm -hmm. Said I'm feeling good. With my face turned to the sun Weight on my shoulders A bullet in my gun Oh, I got eyes in the back of my head Just in case I had I do what I can when I can while I can for my people While the clouds roll back and the stars fill the night That's when I'm gonna stand up Take my people with me Together we are going to a brand new home Far across the river Can you hear freedom calling? Calling me to answer, gonna keep on keeping on. I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> Thank you very much to you all. Really, Sierra for the video, Giovanni for all, 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 everything. Shady and Michelle, Bruno to be so late again. Um, but thank you very much. Uh, Giovanni, if you want to say something just to, to close this beautiful moment that, um, well, that we've, we've been trying to, we've just to get a little bit, as you see, intimate, with the people we are sharing with, in this case with you, Giovanni, and all the covers you have around. So, um, well, we are very, very happy to to begin a again uh, the, this this audiovisual circles. You have to know that we are soon going to go to Mexico in a trip with another friend from Ecoverse, and then to uh, Russia. Those are our two moves. So uh, today to South Africa, Giovanni's world, Giovanni's Ecoverse. Thank you very much. Really, thank you very much. Yo, 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 massive gratitude to everyone. I think, yeah, guys, it's testimony to this experience I'm having that all of us is done by all of us. All of our presence, all of our breaths, all of our heartbeats contribute to the space. So I am also just as grateful and I share 
sort of just that gratefulness and thank you very much for everything. Thank you for the journey. Thank you for the walk. And like, yeah, we walk, we walk forward together. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Before disconnect, uh, go to those links and also take them, open them or save them somewhere. We had six gifts, audiovisual gifts from all over the world, from Canada to um, uh, also Africa again, India, United States, so Colombia, Ecuador. So take those links also and go watch a little bit of audiovisual, audiovisual gifts. And uh, well, thank you very much. Nice, nice night, nice afternoon or a nice day, whatever you are in the world. Thank you for coming to Ecoversities. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye. Thank you, guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. Lots of love, love to everyone. Love Thank you. Next time. Bye. 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 Good night. Night, night. Yeah.